Hi, I'm Devranya, reporting your classroom minute from home while social distancing. As you know, schools are closed across the country and students are learning remotely. Phoenix TV Classroom has extended its programming hours of educational programs from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. daily. You can watch shows on history, art, science, entrepreneurship, and travel. To learn more, visit this website. The coronavirus presents a challenging time for us all, but some see it as an opportunity to step up and help others. One of those people is Angelique Court, a high school student at Cactus Shadows High School, and she's joining us now via WebEx. Hi, how are you? I'm great, thank you for joining us. So, you are only a high school student, you're a sophomore, but you're doing some major things to help out. Tell our viewers what you're doing. So we, I have organized with um, the help of some others, an effort to provide homemade sewn masks to first responders and healthcare professionals because there is an acute shortage in Arizona at the moment. There's definitely a shortage. We hear that all the time on the news. And, you know, when you hear things like that, most people, they may think, oh, you know, you're hopeful that someone will, will solve that issue or resolve that. What, what inspired you to be that someone to take action and create these masks? So my mom was the one who inspired me. She started sewing masks for one of our local hospitals, and then I got involved. And then we were contacted by State Senator Paul Boyer, who wanted to place an order. But it was only the two of us and some of our neighbors and a few local volunteers sewing, and he wanted 700,000 masks. Oh, wow. So obviously, <laughs> that's not feasible for us. Mm -hmm. So I thought, how can we expand this effort? And I contacted the superintendent of the Cape Creek school district, Debbie Burdick, mm -hmm. and she helped me and she got a message out to the community about our effort. And we have received over about 150 volunteers to sew and cut and deliver, pick up masks, et cetera. Oh, that's very impressive. So to date, how many masks did you think you produced? And, and tell me about the response. So we have produced about 400 masks and we are going to receive some others, I think about 150 this weekend. I have a, a co another coordinator and she organizes another group of volunteers that's in a different area. Mm -hmm. So probably about 500 total at the moment. Wow, that's great. And how long does it typically take you to produce a mask? I would say once you have some practice and experience, about 25 minutes per mask. You said you kind of got inspired by your mother. Did she also teach you how to sew? When did you learn to sew? And, and did you ever think that you'd be putting that to use for a service project like this? I actually learned to sew for this project specifically. Um, when the, when the quarantine started, uh, you know, but I had a little bit of free time, mm -hmm. well, a lot of free time. Um, so I had a sewing machine and I started to sew just little things because I, I wanted to have some fun. And then we started making masks and then my mom taught me how to make those. You're a quick learner. That's great. You took this as a challenge to learn a new skill and put service learning into a project that's benefiting our community. That's a great thing. Anytime there's a service project and something of this magnitude, volunteers are definitely helpful. You're helping solve some of the problems that we're facing now with the mask. Um, tell me about volunteers and your need for that. So we have an ongoing need for volunteers. If Even if you can't sew, we have masks to cut. The the fabric needs to be pre-cut for sewers because then it takes them less time because that 25 minutes, it includes also cutting and it's, it's really time consuming there. 
And then we've had requests from Phoenix Children's Hospital, the Mayo Clinic, um, some other hospitals as well. And um, they have an ongoing need. So as much as we can give them is the best. Absolutely. So walk me through the process. So you construct the mask, you, and then what happens? You deliver it. Walk me through the entire process. So we have our sewers who produce the mask, and we also have cutters. And so anything that the, the sewers have, every Saturday we have Boy Scout Troop 15 making a weekly round, and they will pick up finished masks, deliver masks to the beneficiary organizations, pick up cut material and distribute more material to sewers. So they have been instrumental in our logistics process there. When you deliver the masks, tell me about the response. What are they saying? What are the healthcare professionals and first responders saying? They, they are really appreciative. And, um, you know, right now it's, it's key for them to have this because it's their lives on the line at this time. So um, uh, <laughs> they, they are really happy. We're very appreciative for everything that you're doing. Anything else that you'd like to tell our viewers and maybe perhaps you may even inspire them? Well, you know, if you want to sew masks, we have a Facebook page. It's called AZ Mask Project and you can contact one of our coordinators on there. We always need more volunteers. And also, you know, maybe you're not in this area and you can start one of your efforts. You know, contact someone there. There are so many people that you can. You know, there are so many community leaders that, that can help you out with this. Thank you, Angelique. I appreciate everything that you're doing. Keep up Thank the good you. work. Keep up the good work. Thanks. Well, this is the time of year when high school students are attending prom. That's not happening for obvious reasons, but that doesn't mean the prom experience is totally lost. A group of organizers partnered with local businesses, sports teams, and media to bring Promcella to the Valley. It's a two-day music festival that will include a pre-prom tailgate, lots of music, that means DJs, local and national bands, door prizes, giveaways, and even fireworks. It's tentatively scheduled for July. To learn more information, make sure you visit promcellaaz.com. And in the meantime, practice those dance moves. Keep watching Phoenix TV Classroom for more education news, and that's your Classroom Minute.